The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. This is how God packaged the redemption story. And he backed it up with an oath. See, the oath is supposed to settle all arguments. See, sometimes you see people who belong to other religions saying that all religions lead to God. But Christianity is an exclusive religion. We don't say that. We don't say that. We don't. Because our master says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And we believe that. We don't say that because we believe in scripture that the redemption of man, the way God has packaged the redemption, he has backed it with oath. And the oath settles all arguments. So the fact that this guru can lead you to heaven, let them say it. But God knew, even beforehand, that there were going to be many gurus. People who claim to be the, the redeemers and the saviors. They will claim all sorts of things. But in order not to confuse mankind, God settled on Christ. And he did that on oath. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 16. Hebrews 6 verse 16. People swear by someone greater than themselves. Is that true? Yes. And the oath confirms what is said and put an end to all arguments. Put an end to all arguments. The next verse. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the end of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. Verse 18. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, comma, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. So that when you have accepted Jesus as Lord, your anchor should hold, your anchor should hold that you have really been born again. So that you wouldn't have any doubt in your mind, God declared that Christ is Lord. God declared that Christ is the way. And he did that on oath. This is what the scripture is saying now. In the context of the law, a testimony is a statement or a declaration of a witness on the oath or affirmation. Now, if you have to go to court, and then you want to be a witness to a case. If you are a Christian, they will give you the Bible to swear by the Bible. If you are Muslim, they will hand you over the Quran. If you don't want any, you just lift your hands in affirmation. You are telling the whole court that what you are going to say is nothing but the truth. So you are going to testify on the oath. And whatever you say is going to factor in the judgment. If for any reason they found out that you came to lie on the oath, you can also be jailed. Now listen. God himself has also given a testimony. Can you imagine that? That God has sworn by oath? Now, concerning his son, 1 John chapter 5, from verse 9. 1 John 5, verse 9. We accept human testimony, 
But God's testimony is greater because it is a testimony of God which he has given about his son. And this one is big letter S. Jesus Christ. Not us, but Jesus Christ. So God has given a testimony about Jesus. The next verse says this. Whoever believes in the Son of God, accept this testimony. Or, if you accept this testimony, then you have believed in the Son of God. The reverse is also true. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. Because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. How many of us we want to hear the testimony that God has given about his son. Yeah. The next verse will tell you the testimony. And now look at it. Shall we read together? And this is the testimony. Column. Column means that he's going to tell us. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Full stop. Do you see the full stop? You don't add anything to it. God has given us human beings eternal life. And this life is in his son. As against the many others. The next verse says this. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. This is the testimony. That God has given, sworn on oath unto the whole humanity. And the Bible says that this is public. This is God's testimony. Now listen. This story, this testimony, this good news, this God's forbearance, making way for man's sin to be forgiven, this arrangement must be told. The sinner should be confronted with this new arrangement that God has made some arrangement for his escape of sin. God has made the arrangement. And this gospel must be preached. This arrangement must be told. I'm glad when you are taking an offering, I saw many young people in this church and my heart was glad. Young people, you didn't just come to church to sing and to dance. This story must be told. This arrangement must be told. 